church. Just going to move these ones a little bit. Thank you. For those of us that like to move around sometime, <laughs> please bear with me. Thank you. Hallelujah. Happy Sunday to you this morning. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? The psalmist says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Father, we thank you. There is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know it is the presence of the Lord. There is a sweet expression on each face. And I know it is the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly Lord, stay here with us, filling us with your love, and for these blessings, we lift our hands in praise, without a doubt we know. Be revived when we shall leave this place. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. Precious Lamb of God, Messiah, O Holy One. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. Precious Lamb of God, Messiah, oh, Holy One. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh, my Father, for giving us your Son and leave your spirit to your work on it is done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh, my Father, for giving us your son. Live in your spirit to your walk on and is done. Can we take that one more time? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, we thank you, Abba Father. Men drish kol leba nisori hash elods. Yes, I and leave your spirit till your work on it is done. Hallelujah. 
If you are excited that Jesus came to save you, would you put those beautiful hands together for Jesus? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm grateful for Jesus. I'm thankful to the Lord God Almighty for saving me. And it's a wonderful thing. It's joy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And thank you for coming out today. Um, you really love the Lord. That's why you are here. And I appreciate you. To me, it is a great honor to be called a messenger of the gospel, a preacher, a preacher. Someone told me, he says, don't introduce yourself as pastor. People don't really respect pastors these days. I said, really? I like to introduce myself as a pastor. And the reason is because it's a great honor to be called a preacher of the gospel. When you go to the hospital, a doctor is not ashamed to say I'm doctor so and so. And a lawyer is not ashamed to say I'm barrister so and so. Well, I'm Pastor Peter, and I have no apology being a messenger of the gospel. Hallelujah. As you may already know, our pastor, Anthony, is not here today, um, but his heart and prayer is with us. And uh, this morning, before I go forward, I'd like us to give a shout out to the missionaries in the church. Those ministers of reconciliation who go to the nations of the world and bring the message of reconciliation, actively involved in the ministry of reconciliation. I've had the privilege of meeting a few of us, and it's exciting to listen to our story. Would you join me this morning? Let's give a hand to God for those wonderful people who go around to bring the gospel. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you, and may the seeds you have sown bring great Harvest to the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's call right in. Our series is King of Kings. And so far, we have learned the revelation of the king. Pastor Anthony brought us a word last week and let us know that we need a revelation of who Christ is and who we are in him. My take home last week was that the revelation of Jesus is not a matter of human intelligence. It is a matter of revelation. And revelation comes by faith. And so it is faith first, understanding second. We do not focus on the mystery of Christ. We focus on his majesty. Powerful word we got last week. And so today, I'd like to take it off from here, there, and I'll be talking to us on reconciliation of the king. Reconciliation of the king. We need a reconciliation between our old life in Adam, separated from God and subject to Satan, and our new life in Christ, reunited with God and free to reign as kings on the earth. We dominion over darkness. Hallelujah. So I read this morning a few passages of the scripture. I want to begin with Romans 5. Romans 5. We'll read this from the Amplified Version. Romans 5 verse 17. For if by the trespass of one, that is Adam, death reigned through the one, Adam, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in eternal life through the one, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'll also like to read 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5. No, the Bible says, pay attention, give attention to the reading of the word. Verse 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God 
who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Hallelujah. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Verse 20 says, we are therefore Christ ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be seen for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Can you say amen? Let's take a few more scriptures. I love the reading of the word. Now, Revelation 1, 6, starting from 4 actually. It says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. Hallelujah. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And has made us, hallelujah. Can we all read verse 6 together, if you can see it from where you, where you are? Let's read verse 6 together. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Can we take one more? One last one for this time. Okay, Revelation 19. Revelation 19. I read from... Verse number 11. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. Aren't you glad that God is faithful and true? And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed, clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. Thank you, Father, for your word. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness of the rod of Almighty God. And verse 16, can we read this together? And he has on his robe and on his tie a name written, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Father, thank you for your word. Let this word fall on fertile hearts today and let it bring transformation in Jesus' name. Amen. Powerful scriptures. Through one man, sin came into the world. And through one man, righteousness came. The man was Adam. And because of him, when we were born into this world, every one of us inherited sin and death. You didn't have to do anything wrong to be born a sinner in Adam generation. And then through one man, we inherited righteousness. You didn't have to do anything to be righteous. All that needed to happen was Jesus for Jesus to come. And then, now we have been reconciled, justified, because of what Jesus has done. And then he tells us that he did not just stop there. 
He made us kings to God, and we are meant to reign on the earth. Isn't that exciting? So he is the king of kings, and we are kings made to God. That means among all the kings and the lords that Jesus Christ has authority and rulership over, there's a special group of kings and lords that is of interest to us, and that's you and me. He made us kings, and quite frankly, I'm not too worried about the kings of the earth and the kings of the paths of darkness and all of those. No, that's not of my interest, because Jesus told us that I saw Satan fall like lightning. No matter the kings and the kingdoms, every name, every authority, every power, and every throne will bow to the lordship of Jesus Christ. And so I'm not worried about those. What is of interest to me is that he made us kings to our God. He made us kings to our God. That is, the king himself came down from glory to reconcile us to God and make us kings to God to reign in his stead on the earth. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I love it. So essentially, reconciliation means three things, if you will. Three things. Number one, Jesus Christ paid the death that we owed but could not pay. Jesus Christ paid the debt that we owe, but could not pay. When a child is born, is born into a world that is corrupt, a world that is fallen. The child didn't have to do anything wrong. As soon as a child comes into this world, is born into a fallen world world because of what Adam did. And the Bible says that the soul that sins shall die. So death reigned in Adam and everyone that was born into this world because of what Adam did. And in Romans 3 verse 23 says, for all have sinned. All have sinned. It didn't matter how good you are and all the things, nice things you do. And, um, you know, you've never done anything wrong. You've never told a lie. You've never taken anything that does not belong to you. The Bible says that all have sinned. All means all. So everyone has sinned. And then Romans 6, 23, it said, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Aren't you happy about that? Oh, praise the Lord. I like the illustration that um, one of my uh, very beloved friend who's going to be with Jesus, Dr. Miles Monroe, gave about capital punishment. He said, if someone murders someone and you sent them to 10 years um, uh, jail, what you have said is that the life of that man is worth 10 years. But if you say, oh, because you killed someone else, you would have to be killed. That's what they call capital punishment. He said, what that means is that the value of the life that you took can only be paid for with life. And so that's what Jesus did for us. The world was so precious to God. The world, not the church, was so precious to God. He loved the world so much. And the only thing he could give for the world was the life of his son. So Jesus dying says a whole lot about how much God loves us. I owe the debt I could not pay. He paid the debt he did not owe. Now I can go free and sing a brand new song. So that's what it means. Jesus paid the debt. You and I did not have to do anything to be justified, to be reconciled. That's the first thing. It's very important that we know this. It will save us from struggles, from sweating, and from a lot of questions and frustrations regarding the demands of life. Number two thing reconciliation means from this passage we've read is that Jesus gave us the gift of righteousness. He gave us the gift of righteousness. It is a gift. We read Romans 5. 
It said, by the trespass of one man, all sinned. And by the righteousness and the obedience of one, all were made righteous. You did nothing and I did nothing. You and I have been declared righteous because of what Jesus did. That's number two. Number one, he paid the debt we could not pay. Number two, he gave us the gift of righteousness. And then number three, Jesus made us kings to God and masters over the powers of the enemy. I like that. He made us kings to God and masters over the powers of the enemy. In verse 6 of Revelation 1 that we read, he said, and has made us king. He's not going to make us. He has made us kings and priests. Now, for some of us who do not uh, know what a king is, and that's not an everyday word we use, a king simply means a leader. It means a master, someone who is in charge of other people. Is not a subject. Is as opposed to a slave or servant or a subject. A king is the boss. So he made us not inferior but superior. And he did that for the purpose of his kingdom. Can you shout amen? That's exciting. And then in verse 19, he said that he is the king who is Lord and Lord and King over all. So we are kings subject to him. The implication of this, three things, three meanings of the reconciliation that Jesus brought to us simply means that you are debt free. The penalty for sin, which is death, the wages, the penalty. The punishment that we all deserve, you are dead free. You're not going to die. You say, oh, but somebody just died. No, they didn't die. Their spirit left their bodies. You know, if they have received Jesus, their life is eternal and will be with Jesus forever. And that's why when the beloved one goes home to be with Jesus, yes, we miss them, but we don't, we don't weep like those who have no hope. Hallelujah. You are dead free. You owe nothing. And then number two implication is that you are righteous, you have everything. You have everything that you require for life and godliness. And number three implication is that you are in charge, you are in charge. You are a king, an ambassador, you are not just like anybody else on the earth, you are in charge. I love this. I love this. As I prayed, I meditated on this reality of my reconciliation and the implication of what Jesus has done for me, then I realized that even when I got born again, even when I have received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and attend church, by the way, uh, praise God for my mother. My mother, uh, you know, took us to church even when we didn't want to go, we, went, we had to go. And I'm so glad that she did that. Otherwise, who knows where I'll be, probably in jail or somewhere, or maybe I'll be dead. Thank God for my mother who insisted that I should go to church. Someone says, oh, that's child abuse. Well, I'm glad I was abused that way because it made me who I am. Glory to God forever. Amen. Now, I say to myself, number one, you are not. See, these are some misconceptions that I had, which I believe a lot of us who are born again see struggle with today. Number one, you are not reconciled with God. You are reconciled to God. And there's a big difference. You're not reconciled with God. When I got born again and as I was growing up in faith, I tried to reconcile with God. Oh, let's get right with God. Let's make peace with God. Now let's, no. Then I read the scripture that we just read in 2 Corinthians 5. And I saw that he reconciled us to God. The difference is, if you reconcile with someone, it means that both of you are imperfect and you need one another and you want to bring everything that is out of place back in order so there will be a harmony between both of you. That's what it means to reconcile with one another. But if one thing is perfect, it is whole. And then for some reason, something else is imperfect 
and it is lacking in, in wholeness, I can bring that thing which is imperfect to reconcile to this particular thing. And then because of its association with the perfect one, it becomes perfect. All these imperfections are resolved. If you're a banker here, you know what I'm talking about, this everyday word, reconciling accounts in banking. You know, when you have, let's say you have several bank accounts and you are delinquent in some and you just found that, oh, you don't make that payment and the interest on that is high and all of those things. Uh, one of the suggestions that either you or the bank would bring is that you consolidate, is that? You reconcile all your accounts into one. You bring it together. So that's a kind of reconciliation or consolation. But in the case of Jesus Christ, it's not half and half, little, little, all coming together. No, God is perfect. He didn't need to make peace with me. He had no problem with me. You know, all the problem we had was with the devil. And he simply reconciled us to himself. Hallelujah. I love that. You are not reconciled with God. You are reconciled to God, which means you did not have to do anything about it to be reconciled. Say with me, I am reconciled to God. I am righteous. I owe nothing. I have everything. Please, could you say it with confidence? I am reconciled to God. I did not have to do anything. I owe nothing. I have everything. Because of what Jesus has done. Shout amen. Hallelujah. Number two is you are not reconciled to God because you prayed the sinner's prayer. You were reconciled to God even before you realized you were a sinner. These are things that I did not know. I struggled with them. You know? Somebody who wants to give their life to Jesus today and then somebody comes or you raise up your hand and then we pray. You say, oh, now you are reconciled to God. No. The person was reconciled to God even before he knew that he was a sinner. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. In, the Bible says in Romans 5, it said, even when we were without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. He said, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. This is Romans 5.10. If when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. So we were enemies, we were sinners, and we were reconciled. While we were still dead in our trespasses, we were reconciled. You and I are not more reconciled to God than the other man on the street who says there's no God. Everyone has been reconciled to God. He reconciled the world. Isn't that what we read in scripture? He reconciled the entire world to God. To say that some people will be reconciled in future is to say that Jesus would have to go to the cross again each time a person wants to be reconciled. No, it is once and for all. He has reconciled the world to himself. But it is not everybody that has accepted that reconciliation and has come to be part of what God has done. Because Jesus would not have to go to the cross again and again and again for each generation. No, he did it once and for all. Praise God for Bethany heritage. Again, I will keep celebrating that. 145 years. Those who were there when the over 145 years. So those who were there when this church started, who led people to Jesus we're reconciled the day Jesus died on the cross. And how many of us are 145 years old in service today? No one. Okay, so which means when Jesus died for them, Jesus died for us who were still in our mother's womb. And so this is remarkable. It is good for us to know. When you say with confidence, I am reconciled to God, do not have any apology about it. And then it is going to make a world of difference. Now, now. The most important thing, the most important thing here is that you are reconciled to God, not to escape hell, but to reign on earth. 
And that's the biggest one for me. You were reconciled to God, not to escape hell, but to reign on the earth. Everyone who reigns on the earth will escape hell because of what Jesus Christ has done. Because you are a king to God and he has made way for you. Hallelujah. Can you shout amen? Now, would you say with me, I am no longer a slave. I'm a king. I'm born to reign. I have dominion over sin, over sickness, and over all the powers of the enemy. Now, this is the crop of everything I have shared with you so far. Why does it matter that I should know I'm reconciled? Why should, why should I care that I'm reconciled? Why should we give the message of reconciliation to someone else if the whole world has been reconciled? Now, it's very important. Don't forget this. Number one, accusations. Reconciliation silences accusation. How many of us know that Satan is called the accuser of the brothers and sisters? Now, he is an accuser. He will always bring accusation. Now, because of this, you need to know that you have been reconciled. Number two is condemnation. No, you will feel condemned. You will feel that you're nobody. Some people doubt their salvation. As a matter of fact, that you care to call Jesus means that you are on the right track. And then number three is intimidation. There are many things that intimidate people in life. You know, sickness can intimidate people. Financial challenges can intimidate people. Social status can intimidate people. And you need to know who you are in Christ, that you've been reconciled, and that your account is in good status, that, so that you'll be able to deal with all of these things. And, of course, temptation, lured by the enemy to do certain things that negate the status that you have already attained in Christ. You know, four of the deadliest emotions in this world that plague human race are, number one, fear, guilt, shame, and anger. And all of them are linked to accusations, condemnation, intimidation, and temptations of the enemy. You would not know how many people are afraid. Some have anxiety, panic disorder, and all those type of things going on in their life. Why? Because of accusation. Now, listen, God's people, if you are in the camp of the accuser, you are not in the camp of Jesus. You remember the woman they brought to Jesus, and they, they accused her of adultery. And, you know, like someone said, was she committing adultery with herself? Now, they accused her, and Jesus said to her later on, he said, where are your accusers? They all left. Why? Because none one of them could stand. Every one of them had accusation. It's very important that we know that accusation is not of God. You have been reconciled. When the accuser comes in your mind, in your brain, and in your life, accusations, what you did well, what you did not do well, let them know that you have been reconciled. You have been reconciled. That's number one. That's number one. It's very important. No? And then... You see, accusation will do a whole lot against the preaching of the gospel. And that is why many of us who are in the house of the Lord today, who are ministers, ambassadors of Christ, would have to stay away from accusation. Condemnation. Somebody um, bring us something. I don't like the way this guy talks. I don't like the way he's full of himself. I don't like the way you condemn. You're watching television. You don't know the guy. The guy does not know you. You say, who is this guy? What does he think? He, you know, be, don't be too quick to comment and to share things and to bash people on social media that you don't even know. You know, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. Who shall condemn us? Is it God who justified us? No, there is no condemnation. Why? Because we have been justified. We have been justified. Hallelujah. Glory to God forevermore. Can you say amen? We have been justified. There's no condemnation. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. What about intimidation? Maybe sickness or some life plague or some things. Reconciliation took care of all of those things. I need to know how to not be intimidated. 
So that the things that were meant to embarrass you in this world, in this life, will now work in your favor. When the Jews took Jesus and crucified him like a robber, like a thief, like a criminal, they wanted to embarrass him. But on the third day when he got up, Jesus, because he was right with God. And then the scripture said, had they known, they would not have crucified the king of glory. Because while he was still on that cross, even the thief was drawn to him. He was raising men and drawing men to him. Now listen, because you have been reconciled, everything that's intimidating you, I speak by the authority in the name of Jesus. Right now, I silence those intimidating voices in Jesus' mighty name. Can you say, believe in amen? Very important. Guilt, something you did five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, God has forgiven you. If you have come, if you have knowledge and you repent, and then it keeps coming, a circle, a circle, speak directly to that thing and let them know I have been reconciled. And of course, that is, if you have accepted Jesus Christ, you will be able to do these things and take responsibility for yourself. Now, I like to say this as we uh, take a moment to, to just pray on them because as you go from here I want you to know what to do I will be working on these things that I'm telling you this is what I have worked on in the past and this is what I'm going to be working on again this week are my practical steps life application number one be aware of who you are be aware be aware where you stand in the ongoing battle of identity how many of us know that there's a battle of identity it has been on. When Satan came to Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, turn the stones to bread, it was a battle of identity. Because Jesus knew who he was, Satan knew who Jesus was, but there was a battle. If you find yourself questioning who you are, maybe the color of your skin or the accent in your voice, like the rich accent that I'm using right now, hallelujah. Or maybe your level of education or, or maybe you're a man or woman and all those type of things or your marital status, whether you're married or single. Don't be all those, be aware of who you are. You need knowledge, study the word of God. Look into the mirror of the world and find out who you are. Walk tall, walk elegant, and be very confident because what Jesus did for you is to make you a king to God. If you're excited about that, would you shout amen? Very important. And that's what I'm going to be, do, be doing this week. Be aware of who you are. Go through the scriptures, study on identity and authority of the believer this week. And then number two thing I'll be doing, which I ask you to do also, be bold like a lion. Can I quickly tell you this? In spiritual warfare, boasting is a weapon. And you cannot boast unless you are bold. If you, do, the Bible says the righteous is as bold as a lion. So if you know you are righteous, be bold. And if you are bored, you will boast. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Now, don't miss this next point. Be meek like a lamb. One of the reasons many people suffer and become victims in spiritual warfare is because they are bored like lions, but they don't know how to be meek like lambs. You see, power without love is satanic and destructive. And love without power will make you a victim in the wars of life. You need both. You need to be bold. You need to be bold. Thank you. You need to be bold and you need to be meek. When Satan comes, did you see when he said with the rod in his mouth, he will strike the nations. He will destroy the kingdoms. He's not talking about his people. He's talking about the kingdom of darkness. There are times when you need to pray, you stand up, and then you pray in the Holy Ghost. For those of us who believe in that, you can pray in tongues, and you pray in unknown language. Because the Bible says that when you speak in tongues, you speak mysteries to God. And then you speak boldly. You speak boldly, and you speak to the kingdom of darkness. Now, if I didn't know that, I would be dead by now. I'm telling you something. I'll be dead. Because of spiritual attack and all the things that come against people. Be bold. Turn to someone sitting by you and tell them, be bold. Say it with boldness. Say, be bold. Hallelujah. And be meek. You know, very important. And then finally, stay on your position of 
authority. Never leave there. Sin takes men out. Sins bring reproach. Disobedience and, and, and going against the word of God makes you be come timid and all of those things. So stay in that high place as much as you can. And if you make a mistake, we have an advocate. You can always come to Jesus who has reconciled you to God and then you can make your way right to God and you'll be up again. Aren't you excited about that? So either way you win. You go to the right or the left everywhere, you win. Why? Because of what Jesus has done. And this is a word for those of us who are young and you are yet to get married. Relationship accounting is very important. Relationship accounting. And that's a discussion for another day. But I'd like you to know that you cannot just unite yourself with anything and with anyone. Because relationships have implication. Look for those who know Jesus and who understand that they've been reconciled and you have a great relationship. Can I ask us to rise this moment? And i like us, if you have received the word of God today, and if you have anything that you're going to apply to your life, and something that is going to be of benefit to you this week, say to God, thank you for sending me your word today. I receive it joyfully. I receive it wholeheartedly. And I thank you for it. Thank you, mighty Father. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed and given thanks. Amen. Now, we're going to take some moment to pray a little more right after this song. And if you have anything that has to do with guilt, with fear, with anger, with shame, anything, i like you, even as this song is going on, begin to talk to God about it and realize that your account has been reconciled. There's nothing that God will not take care of right here in this place this morning. Now, let's take this song. Thank you. I used to be very timid, very shy. Couldn't look into someone's face. And yes, I, yet I was reconciled. One day, one day, a sister in church just spoke to me. Didn't preach. Said, I'd like you to make a friend. And introduced that friend to me. And I'll be their friend. Something fired into me. From then on, I became bold. I became talkative. I would be the one to hide at the back of the room. There was spirit and life in the words of that sister. Lift up your right hand. You suffer with timidity. You suffer from shyness, chronic. You feel that you are nobody. Right now, by the authority in the name of Jesus and the spirit and life in this world, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. And if you believe that, would you say, believe in amen. There's someone here, someone, you don't know which way to go. You don't know what to do. Fear of the unknown. Fear about the future. Because I have brought the word of God to us this morning. The anxiety of tomorrow. The worries and everything that are there. I speak by the authority in the word of God and the integrity of God's word today. That fear is defeated in Jesus' name. I speak to every sickness in the body, sleeplessness. Someone, you have problems sleeping. You can't sleep. You won't sleep badly, but you cannot sleep. Now receive this. As I speak to you right now, this night you will sleep like a baby. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'd like you to know that I'm not just talking. I'm talking with authority in the word of God. I'm talking in the authority in the name of Jesus. Integrity of God's word. And today you will be free from all form of affliction of the night. In Jesus mighty name. If you believe that would you say believe in amen. Lastly I want to pray for someone. You don't know Jesus. All this thing about reconciliation you do not know what it is. You don't know what it is. Now, the rest of us, you can put down your hand if you have already given your life to Jesus. And then I just want you to say, Jesus, you mean you loved me that much? And you took me from a nobody, indebted to death and sickness and you sin, and then you brought me into your kingdom? I want to live for you. If you are that person, I'd like you to just lift up your hand. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Maybe there's someone, you know you're in a wrong relationship, a young person, and you know you're in the wrong relationship, but for some reason you don't know how to get out of it. And it has become a yoke, 
a burden and a chain in your life. If you would receive this right now, today the strength of the Almighty will make it possible for you to say goodbye to that relationship. If you're that person, just wave your hand where you are and I'm speaking to you right now. Every wrong relationship, every chain, every wrong association with the paths of darkness, you will not go back to where God took you out of. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you are giving your life to Jesus today, I'd like you to just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I thank you for reconciling me to God. I thank you for saving me. I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God and you died to reconcile me. From today, I declare and I confess that you are my Lord. Now, if you said those words, or in your own special way, you invite Jesus into your life, we believe you are born again. And please, um, we have things for you to help you walk that, make that decision real as you go forward. So you could please um, let us know by filling out a card or at the blue corner there. We will be happy to walk with you. And there's joy in heaven because of you. Can we put those beautiful hands together for Jesus today? Amen. Amen. Now, before we go, um, there is this little book, the, the Life and Teachings of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Life and Teachings of Jesus of Nazareth. They are free. And if you just pray that prayer, this is a good book to start with. And it's at the blue Corner, And you can see our beloved sister there is lifting it up and you can grab yourself a copy and do well to study. When you become aware, the devil's intimidation, accusation and oppression will cease. Is somebody bold in this service? Is somebody bold in this service? Shout a bold amen. Can you shout a bold amen? Say it with confidence. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. If I make you a little bit uncomfortable, I love you so very much and that's why I'm doing this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May this week be the most restful, joyful, blessed week you have had so far. And if you receive it, say believe in amen. Have a wonderful weekend. We are dismissed. God bless you.